Welcome to another segment of our Essential Corridor Light Rail Transit updates. I'm Janelle Tummel with the City of St. Paul. There's been a lot going on with the Central Corridor since our last update and construction is already underway. We're excited to have some very special guests with us today to let us know how the project is moving along. Joining us today are Shua Lee, Community Outreach Coordinator with the Metropolitan Council, and John Matsko, City Engineer with the City of St. Paul Department of Public Works. So Shua, where are we at right now with construction? Well, first I wanna say thank you for having us today. Uh, right now we are working on construction in the downtown area and we'll be finishing um, the utility relocation on that this year. Uh, we are also working in the capital area. Walsh Construction will begin uh, work after Labor Day. And starting next year, we'll be on U University Avenue in 2011, uh, the western part of University Avenue, and then the eastern part in 2012. Uh, the U of M area, we're working on road improvements this year. And so there's quite a bit going on. It sounds like it. And so John, all this construction, all these moving parts, how do you keep it coordinated? Well, it's uh, sometimes very difficult, uh, Janelle, but uh, uh, we have weekly coordination meetings. Uh, there's numerous people involved, the Metropolitan Council, City of St. Paul, uh, Public Works, and all of the uh, stakeholders, the contractors, the utilities, et cetera, meet uh, to deal with uh, issues. We also meet with the community to get feedback from them on what's going right and going wrong. And, you know, frankly, uh, it's one of the largest, it is the largest public works project ever constructed in the state. And so if you think about it, trying to bring it down to a level, it's like remodeling your home and living in it um, at the same time. So sometimes streets are open, closed. Uh, we dig them up and then we have to close them up for a while while another utility is, is preparing to, to get their stuff through. So you mentioned that sometimes there's some hiccups. What should people do, Shua, if there are questions or concerns during this construction period? Well, they can definitely call the hotline for the Center Quarter project. Um, we'll be posting that in the construction areas, the blue signs with the phone number, and that's a 24-hour hotline, and people with different languages can call up, and then they'll send out emails and call several different individuals, so that way you don't have to contact several individuals on your own. Right. Um, you can also always contact the outreach coordinators and we have information on our website that's you know continuously being updated. We do email alerts um, and uh, the, even the outreach coordinators speak several different languages so that's also a big help as well. That's wonderful. So when issues arise with uh, business or property owners, what steps are taken then to resolve them? Well, first we try to identify what the problem is uh, and, and see if we can resolve it. It might be something as simple as the access is blocked because a construction vehicle was parked in the way. Um, it might be something that someone's got an event coming up this weekend and maybe we can work around it and work with them. Uh, there are the unforeseen things that weather causes that uh, kind of once you take the cover off the street, there's a, things that you find that you didn't know were there mm. uh, that were left from the past. So we really try to work very quickly to determine because the, the contractor and all the partners realize that the time that we're sitting there, we're actually impacting somebody else's business. So businesses are obviously a huge stakeholder in this process. Are there any um, special resources out there uh, directed at them? Um, well, the outreach coordinators are definitely the number one go-to people. Okay. Um, we have worked with businesses to figure out um, access issues. You know, should, can we keep their driveway open or do we have to find another access from the alley or from a side street? So they have to work with us first and foremost um, because we work directly with the contractor. Um, so we can make sure that it, it all, access always remains available. And then uh, there's also other resources. Um, the Business Resources Collaborative um, has put together a great program, the Ready for Rail Initiative. Um, so there's small business consultants that are um, working through the Business Resources Collaborative with a group called the U7 Collaborative. And they are, have been very resourceful for the businesses and we refer them back and forth to each other. And so finally, 
Are there any internal goals or um, things that we try to do to alleviate um, some of the problems that businesses might encounter? Well, we're, we're trying to keep all business, uh, all areas accessible. We've written specific things into the construction contracts uh, when the contractors bid on them. Examples like uh, we will finish the businesses uh, in one construction season uh, for the major impacts. That's the sidewalk and the roadway right in front. No sidewalk will be out more than 15 days is written in the contract. So that's something new to this area, uh, but it's worked very well in other parts of the country and, and we believe it, it will work equally as well here. Well, thank you both very much for being here today and giving us a wonderful update on the Central Corridor Light Rail Transit. Stay tuned for more Central Corridor news and updates. And remember, complete project information is available on our website at stpaul.gov slash Central Corridor. Thanks again for watching.